Hi guys, I'm here to talk to you about the rack. And when I say that, I don't mean the medieval torture device. I mean the drying rack that you put clothes on to dry other than your dryer. Uh, I'm also going to discuss the different settings of your dryer so that you know which ones are more energy efficient if you don't actually have an energy star appliance. So this is my parents' drying rack. Right now it's drying a couple sweaters. These... The rack is really good for heavier clothing, like your heavy sweaters, like this is kind of a heavy cotton. Uh, wools, denim for sure, because the heavier materials tend to take longer in the dryer to dry. So having them on a drying rack like this spreads them out, as you can see the sweaters are spread out, and it actually helps them dry faster. The added benefit of this, and if you have the space in your basement, I totally recommend it, is that in the fall and winter, this heater that you see right now is on. So stuff on the drying rack definitely dries faster than what's in the dryer. Um, now, if you have to use a dryer because you're going to a laundromat or you don't have a space for a drying rack or the time, I know the dryer can be faster in some cases, then let's discuss the different settings. Okay. Now, this is an older Kenmore dryer. So I don't have the older owner's manual because it came with the house that my parents live in. So now, if that ever happens to you and you don't know how to figure out what setting is the best setting, then try going online and doing a little research. Like, if, since I know this is a Kenmore, I could go to the Kenmore website and either contact somebody or try to find model information on this particular dryer. Um, the different settings, though, are pretty easy to figure out on the newer machines. The most commonly used setting is the high heat, and it's used most often because people want things to dry and they want them to dry fast. So the problem with the high heat, though, is that it uses more energy because you're heating that air and you're heating it to a much higher temperature. You're also spending more carbon emissions. However, if you have to use this setting, there is a small silver lining. There's a more dry and a less dry. Most dryers have some sort of thing like this. It may not be called more or less dry, but what it means is that for smaller loads, I don't have to use this high setting. I can go like halfway down between less dry and more dry and the, there's going to be less heat used and it's still going to get my smaller load dry fast. Um, the setting I like to use is the knit slash delicate because it's a low heat. Low heat means that you're not using quite as much heat. The air that you are using is not quite as high a heat, as high a temperature I mean as the higher setting and again it still has the more and less dry so if I have a small load I put it on less dry and it doesn't use as much heat and it doesn't run as long the best setting if you can get if you can use this is the air setting the air setting on this dryer means it's a no heat setting now this is not so great for your jeans or your thicker materials because most of those wools actually need the heat to dry because they're so super absorbent that cold air is not going to really get them dry very quickly. However, your basic tees, your shorts, your socks, this is a perfect setting. Now on this dryer, you only have the option between 10 and 20 minutes. Most new dryers, you can go all the way up to 60 minutes if you have a larger load. Again, the cool air setting is works just as well as the other settings, but I would recommend not putting your jeans or your rugs or your heavy materials into this particular setting, um, this particular cycle. It's more for lighter materials, like I said, like tank tops, shorts, whatever you've got. The other great setting is a timed setting. It is high heat. However, the good thing about the time setting is that it allows you to be in control of how long the dryer runs. Even though you're using a much higher temperature, I can put my clothes in for 10 minutes or the touch-up setting, which is about 15 minutes. And it allows me, like, if I got caught in a rainstorm or if I went swimming with the kids I babysit for or something and my t-shirt got wet, I can throw it in for 10 minutes, dry off my t-shirt, and be done. And so that way I'm not using quite as many carbon emissions and I'm not wasting as much energy putting in a full load at 50 minutes. Okay, 
I hope this was a little helpful at least. The next step will be for me to show you how to hang a line dry for clothing outside. We're going to be doing that at my house. I actually have a couple hooks already in place. So I'll show you how to set that up and the benefits of using it. Hi there. We're here in my backyard and I'm about to show you the clothesline that I assembled. Now it's already up and hung because I only have two hands and I can't hold a camera and assemble at the same time. But if you'd like to see the written instructions, a step-by-step -step process that I used, I'm going to be posting it to the Protego Environment WordPress site as soon as I'm done with this. Okay, now what I am going to show you are the components that I did use and I'm going to tell you how you can find them. So if you'll follow me this way. Alright, so if you look right here, I've used a few different components. The first one is a screw eye. And the screw eye and the S hook that you're, I'm going to tell you about, I bought at Home Depot. They're really easy to find and it's actually really easy to assemble. All I did was I drilled a hole into the side of my house and I screwed in the screw eye. Now through the screw eye, I put the S hook. Now the S hook, all I did for this end was I bent it with a set of pliers. The other end, I put my pulley on. Now I found the pulley at Home Depot as well, but you can probably find them cheap anywhere. I know Walmart has them. I don't know about any of the other stores, but I do know that Walmart has them. I saw them when I was looking the other day for clothespins. Now, the rope, I got a thinner rope, but it's a very sturdy exterior rope. So this is the kind of rope that you're going to want, is one that's weatherproof. All right. Now what I did is I ran it through the pulley so that it comes in one end and goes out the other, if you can see that. All right. And then, if you follow me this way... Oh, and by the way, those are the clothespins that I got at Walmart. Really, really cheap, $1.97. On this end, I ran the rope around the tree, as you can see there, sorry. And I already had chain here because I had a hammock, but you don't need the chain. You can just wrap the rope right around the tree. And I also did, on either side here, I did two figure eight knots. Those are going to be sturdy enough to keep it from falling down, from from getting wet and coming loose so I think you'll be all set if you know a better knot feel free this figure eight is one that I've an old standby of mine so if you have something that you think works better feel free to use it I, you don't really need to attach anything else like I said I used the chain because it was already here and I ran the rope through it but that is an unnecessary step all right and that is as easy as it gets now the only thing you're gonna want to watch out for is that if you live in an apartment building or a condo association, you're going to want to check the bylaws and check with your landlord first to make sure that it's okay to hang a clothing line. Now, I live on a corner unit. It's not obstructing anything, and it is okay. But I don't want anyone getting in trouble with their landlords. So double check your laws before you hang something on the side of your home or in a wall. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more videos.